the one who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world. It is not about what you do and what you stopped doing that will make you be born again. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. The moment you believe, the Holy Spirit takes over and he makes you a new creation. He gives you a new birth to the family of God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus, marvelous believers. Wow. Welcome to our show once again. This is the Marvelous Believers Show. This is a platform that we always meet and fellowship and love the word of God and love the gospel. I always say if it's not good news, it's not the gospel. And so we meet here and fellowship over the good news. The good news that we have been redeemed. The good news that we have been reconciled to God. The good news that uh, we are loved. We've been accepted in the family of God. The good news that we belong to God. That is the good news and that's why we are marvelous. So today I am again so excited. Thank you for tuning Tuning in. Thank you for always finding time to tune in and to encourage us and giving us feedback. And I know that God has continually continued to bless you. I am Lucy Lepore. I am your host and I'm, I am always so honored. Kindly please remember to share this link with a friend and with as many people as possible now or even later so that we become a blessing to everyone that we are able to reach remember the other day we were learning that we are the ambassadors we are the ones that can spread this word we are the ones that can reach out to many it's as though god were pleading through us it's such an honor that god has entrusted you and me with the message of the kingdom with the matters of the kingdom jesus said i no longer call you servants but friends because servants do not know things that for the mass what the master is planning but we've been made the sons of God that we actually know the matters of the kingdom and we've been entrusted with those matters. Hallelujah. That's why we are marvelous. And today I am, I am very excited. I don't know how I would put it. Maybe for lack of a, a, another word, I would just say I am so honored and so excited because I am in the studio today with our director at Wema TV. Uh, it's a beautiful thing to have our director here to share the word of God with us. Uh, I will allow her to introduce herself, but I can tell you it's someone that I have known for quite a long time. She's a minister of the word. She has a passion, unmatched passion, zeal for the love of God and to share the love of God. And so it's such a honor that uh, you are able to come and to grace the Marvelous Believers show. And we are so honored that you are here. Uh, I can just allow you to introduce yourself and carry on with the show. Wow, wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Lucy, uh, for that introduction. I am equally honored to be here. <clears throat> I'm very excited. I'm a, a top fan of this show. I've been following and the Lord has been uh, speaking to me through this show. I have learned so many things in this show, and I am so honored to be the one ministering in the very same show today. So welcome, all of you. My name is Grace Kiboy. I am born again. Uh, I love the Lord because he loved me first. He left the glory of heaven to come and die for me. I didn't know I needed a savior. I didn't know I was lost. I was dead, and yet I didn't know. But he decided to leave the glory of heaven to come and look for me. And his love was too much that I can only love him back. And that is very exciting to me. I think that's the best thing that has ever happened to me, experiencing the love of Christ. And uh, I would want us to share the word of God today. And uh, uh, I have, in this show, I would say, it is very clear for those who have been following that we only, we only talk about Jesus. And uh, I am also here to talk about Jesus and uh, the, the, the love of the Father and who he has made us to be in him. And uh, today I want to uh, call my message Sonship uh, because I want to talk about the family of God and who we have become in that family. And I would say, uh, the biggest problem in the life of a believer today 
is a lack of knowledge. Actually, it is not about the devil and sickness and curses and uh, financial material blessings and all that, or things that are not working on who, and what, are, what is working. Uh, I would say the biggest problem in the, in the body of Christ today is knowledge. And I'm very excited that in this show, uh, we learn so much about the knowledge of what Christ has become and who we have become in him. And today I want, to, I want us to learn about our sonship. And I want us to go to the word of God direct to the book of John to start with uh, the book of John chapter 1. Verse, uh, we start from verse 12. And the Bible says that, uh, verse 12 and 13, but to all, I'm using New Living Translation, but to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are born not with a physical birth resulting from human passions or plan, but a birth that comes from God. Uh, one of the things we see from this verse is that the qualification of being a child of God is to believe. To all, not to some, not to those who do other things, but to all, so there is no discrimination. It is to all who believe and accepted him, he gave them the right to become children of God. So if you're there and you believe, you're already a child of God. That is believing in Christ, what he has done, believing that, uh, we, or, believing everything that Christ has done on the cross that he did on your behalf. When you believe that, you become a child of God. And the Bible uh, says that these children of God, they are not born of human passion. They are not born from husbands and wives. They are not born as a result of your mom and dad deciding they want to have a baby. They are born of a spirit. They are born from God. So this tells us that the work of, uh, the, work of the new birth is the work of the Holy Spirit. It is not the work of a human being. It is not about what you do and what you stopped doing that will make you be born again. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. The moment you believe, the Holy Spirit takes over and he makes you a new creation. He gives you a new birth to the family of God. And that tells us that if uh, the, the day you, you, you believe you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, because he's the one who comes, you cannot be born again without the work of the Holy Spirit. That, that tells us very well. And also it is when you believe, that is the way you are initiated into this family. And I would say at this point that uh, we, we all come from a family. And I know even if you don't have your own family, of course you came from a family. And the family I'm talking about is the one that was out of your mother and your father deciding to give birth to you, whether it was planned or not planned, but you came from uh, the one that the Bible is saying, physical birth resulting from human passion. And still in that family, because that is what we know, maybe you can come from what we know first. We would say in that family, every family has its own way of doing things. Every family has, first of all, each family has members. And I would say in this family of God, the members are the believers. The day you're born again, you are welcomed into this family. This is how you're born by the Holy Spirit. And that is how you become a member of the family. And then each family has a way of doing things. <clears throat> like most people who are married, they realize what the family that they came from believes and the family they get married to believes may be very different. Some may be different cultures. Some may be just the way you handle things. Some things are normal to some families and some things are very abnormal to some families. Because when you get born in that family, you take the culture of that family. When you're born in that family, you start talking the language of that family. Like it is unlikely that you will find somebody from Central, born in Central, speaking 
a very different language, maybe from Eastern or Western Kenya. So you, you learn the language of that family, you learn the, the culture of that family, you go to the school that children in that family go to school, the age they go to school, and so each family has their own ways of doing things and their own setup. And uh, in this family of God, we also have our own way of doing things and our own uh, uh, the, the beliefs. There is what we believe. There's something that there are some things that we believe that can never happen to us in this family because, as maybe I can talk about the royal family, for example, in Kenya, the first family. There's somebody who would want not only to be born in that family because now getting born in that family can be difficult, but I know people who would want at least to be married to that family because they know their children will never have problems, their children, because they know the moment I am associated with that family, things have changed. And what I would say, I would want us to, uh, to read um, the book of God, uh, Ephesians 1, 3 to 6, to see in this family of God, how, 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 how had God prepared for us? Or is it a normal family? Because as a normal person, for example, me as a, as a mother, I'm a mother of four, I am always thinking of the goodness of the well, good, the goodness of my children. I have seen parents who ask about insurance before the children are born. And I think most insurance companies say once they are born, we can register them for insurance. But I have seen people who ask, can I start something? They start saving for their children before they are even married. Actually, I know when we were, I remember personally when I was in high school, we used to say we are doing all this for our children. It's like we were born knowing, yes, you're born in primary, lower primary, we were thinking we are studying for our parents. But as you grow older, it is that same thing in you that you will have a family and you start working hard because you will have a family and you don't even know when you will have it. But in high school, we are saying, we are saying we are working hard for our children. And today when I look at my children, I wonder, hey, I started working hard for you when I was in, in high school. And it is something that enters us naturally, like if you are to give a birth to a child, you need to take care of them. And we are natural beings. Now you can imagine God being a child of God. So you can imagine the way we plan for our children. We get insurance. We do things, we, we plan, we, we say, now here, yeah, I want to buy a plot, I want to do this plot and so that I can get income, so that my children will never lack school fees, we will never lack shelter. The things we do with our children in mind. And I, I, want, I want us to look at Ephesians 1, 3 to 6 and see how about our God. If us who are, the Bible calls us unrighteous uh, as parents. How about God planning for his own children? <clears throat> um, Ephesians 1, you can start from verse 3. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. So the first thing we, we are seeing there is that we are blessed with every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. No, it is not uh, a few or many. It is every spiritual blessing Christ has, uh, God has already blessed us with as long as we are in Christ Jesus. And we said to be in this family, you need to believe in Christ and you're, you become part of this family. So when you're in Christ Jesus, the Bible says that you are, you are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And verse 4 says, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. We are talking about before God created the world. And before man was created, God had so many billions of years there between creation of man and the creation of the world. And 
God had used all those years to prepare for man. Everything that God created before man was in preparation for man because he wanted this child to have everything. Even the physical things, apart from the, in the spiritual, apart from uh, being blessed in the spiritual realms, he created, whatever he created, he, whatever you see, the trees, the, everything that you see on earth was created in, primary, in preparation to man. Every good thing, gold, silver, everything that is on this world, that God deposited on this world, the sun, the moon, everything was in preparation of the man. Because God had created everything, but he still had the urge of a father because he was a father who did not have children. And he was doing all these things, preparing the whole world for, the, for, for a man, for man who... God wanted to create, to, to fulfill that urge of being a father. For all those years, he was a father, and yet he did not have children. So he did all those things to prepare uh, for us as his children. And the Bible says that he loved us. So the reason he did that is because he loved us. So he chose us before the foundations of the earth, he already chose us, and then he made us holy and without any fault. So if you're thinking you're a child of God and you think you're not holy, the, this verse can, has answered you that you're holy and you're blameless. And the Bible says that God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. Wow, this is wonderful. That he planned to tumble. It is not... It is not when you, you got born again that God planned for you. He planned for you before the foundations of the earth. So when he created the earth, he did all that for you. And then another thing he did, because he knew, uh, because the devil uh, made his mistake and was thrown into this world before we came. So God knew, I am bringing my son into this world and there's a devil. So the other thing he did is that he conclusively dealt with the things that would have affected us. In Christ, he conclusively dealt with the devil. He conclusively dealt with the, 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 the nature, the, the things that came with the devil taking authority. Because actually, before even the devil took authority, uh, or rather Adam gave authority to the devil, God, in his foreknowledge, he knew. So he had planned what will happen. Even if this man fails, I will still have an option. And he, he, he did all this. He planned this from the foundations of the world. And he gave us, he planned to give us Jesus Christ, who will come and take over all the authority from the devil and give it back to us. He will take over sicknesses. He will take over curses. He will take over poverty. He will take over... Everything that can ever affect us. So what he did, he provided in Christ every spiritual blessing. And we are spiritual beings, so we are able to access those blessings. And then he comes and plants every, I mean, every, everything that can ever affect you. He even gives us the Holy Spirit so that we can never be stranded. Apart from giving you all the power and authority. Then through the Holy Spirit, he comes and lives in you, and he decides you will never be stranded in life. You are my child, and I have given you my own life. Because uh, the moment we, we, we get born, or rather or any child takes the DNA of the, of the father. So because we are born of God, our DNA is the DNA of God himself. We are his seed. We are of him. The Bible says that we, we are of God, you are of God, you little children, and you have overcome the world because our seed is the seed of God. We have come from him. And it tells us that every seed takes after its own nature. Every child takes after the DNA of the father. And fa God, our father, is our, is the, is, is, God is our father. So we have taken after his DNA. So we can never fail. But now, the, the, the issue that comes is when 
I was talking about a family, the other family, we go back there. And when that family, for example, somebody is born into that family, and maybe they are moved to another country, and they don't know they were born in that family, they may end up behaving like people from another country. But their DNA is from, the, from that family because of lack of knowledge. And one thing I would say, uh, it is good for us to learn about this family. Well, once you know you are in this family, it is going to, good to learn the culture of this family and also to grow in it. For example, in this family, we speak in tongues. We don't speak the way we are speaking now. We speak in tongues. We are spiritual beings. You know, when I'm in this family, I'm not a normal being. I am a spiritual being. I am superior to the devil. I am superior to the things of this world. The one who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world. So I am different. I am peculiar. I am, I am not like any other person. Yes, I am in the world, but I am not of this world. Our family, this is not where we belong. I know where I come from. I know my, my generation. I know my source. The Lord God is my father. So when you learn that and you grow in it, there's some things that will never uh, happen in your life. Like, uh, like we had said about the first family. The moment, if somebody knows I am from the president's family, there's some things that will not affect them. There's some worries that will never come to them. Now imagine you are, the, you are, you are a child of the king of kings. And the Lord of Lords. You're not a child of the King of this world. You are so privileged that you cannot even understand it. It is not even something that, you, that we can fully explain how it is. That you are a child of the creator of heaven and earth. You are a child of the creator of heaven and earth. So, you, you just, and then this creator of heaven and earth created the world through his word. So, you can never be stranded. You'll be creating your own world. Take after your father. Create things. If they're not working, create them. Your word is the command. But the, the issue would be not knowing or not growing in it. And as I finish uh, the, the verse I was reading, uh, the, 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 the last verse um, of verse 6, Ephesians 1, uh, 3, Verse 6 says, sorry, verse 5, God decided to add, okay, um, this, this is what he wanted to do, and it gave him pleasure. This really excites me. This is what God, he adopted us, he predestined us, and this is what he wanted to do, and it gave him pressure. And I'm imagining like any other parent, the pressure your children gives you. It gives him pleasure. When God looks at you, it gives, gives him pleasure as your child. So if you're not doing things in that family, it is not God who has not allowed you to do. It is you who has not done them. Because the, the Lord looks at you as his best, his beloved son. And it, you give him pleasure. Just the way you are, you give him pleasure. So if you don't do the things like he does, Actually, sometimes I feel like the Lord wonders and I think we do, he's not even happy when he looks at us and he's wondering. And just take a minute and think, if you're not a parent, imagine you're a parent. If you're a parent, you are a parent, imagine your own child. You have bought insurance. You have paid all his school fees. And then every morning he wakes up and goes to a mjengo somewhere looking for money to pay for his school fees. And yet you have done everything for them. He wakes up in the morning, you have uh, workers in the house, but your three-year-old is waking up and going to look for breakfast and cooking and looking for things there in the kitchen and in the fridge to cook. How would you feel? Because that is how we do. We take over as if we don't have children, as if we don't have parents. We, we behave like orphans. We want to do things on our own, and yet God has done everything for us. But we want to think about our own way of getting out of a situation. You go through something, and you're looking for your own way of getting it, getting out. And yet God has given you the Holy Spirit. It is his pleasure to see you as his son, 
who he predestined. He planned everything. He provided everything from the foundation of the... Before you, he thought of creating, he first planned the whole world for you. And then you start working hard on your own, looking for the things that he has already provided. How would you feel if you are such a parent? A parent? But this, this child is still looking for ways and still looking for school fees. And yet, insurance is paying for he, all his education and you have already done it. And he's there trying to help you to do things. And yet he, don't know how, he doesn't even know how to do them because you know better. And he's not asking you how to do it. You already have done it. He doesn't even know. He doesn't want to know. He just wants to do things to get a way out. I think that is, that is what most of us have done. And when good God looks at us, he wonders, how will I help my children? Because I have done everything for them. And yet they are not, they are not willing to cooperate. You have the Holy Spirit who, who will lead you. The Holy Spirit is there wondering, when, I mean, he's there to help you. You are not asking him for help. He's there to assist you. You are not asking. You have the ministration of angels. Angels are there. They're waiting for you to assign them. You're not there to, you are not, you're not asking them. You're not, angels work like robots. You have to tell them what to do. If you don't tell them, they don't do. So just, they're just there wondering. Imagine you are, for example, your, your angel of prosperity waiting there for you to give him instructions and you're struggling alone with debt and all that. And the angel of prosperity is wondering. And as we finish, I want us to read uh, Galatians um, 4.1. Uh, Galatians 4.1. And I want us to, that we we see where the issue is that, think of it this way, if a father dies and leaves an inheritance for, your ch for, for young children, those children are not much better off than slaves until they grow up, even though they actually own everything their father had. They have to obey their, their guardians until they reach whatever age their father set. And that is the way it was with us, before Christ came. So if we don't agree to mature up, to take position as sons, we may be living as children, and yet everything belongs to us. And I would say even in your own, in your own, in your own family, you children who are very young, they, they may not know what, what you own. They may not know they belong to that family. They may not even know if the house girl is their sister or their elder sister. They may not know even, even some workers have done bad things to, the, to, to children because they do not know. So for us, we need to understand that we are children. We are, we are, yes, we are children of God, but we need to mature up to sons. We take over the position as sons in that family so that we are able to do what we need to do we're able to do what Christ, because Christ is our firstborn. And we're able to do everything that Christ did or than able to do. And Christ is not here on earth. We are not the sons of God who are here to manifest Christ. We are not the, 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 the we, we, are not, we are not the sons who are in this world to demonstrate the power of God, to, to, to do what God uh, wants us to do. The, the whole world is waiting for us. Actually, the Bible says that the world is waiting for the manifestation of sons. And it is because we are the ones who are here. We are not waiting for God to come and do things. We are sons. We have his DNA. We have everything he, that is required of us. All we need to do is take positions as the sons. Let us go and preach the gospel. It is our work to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to do everything that Christ did when he was here on earth. Because we are his, we are God's beloved sons, and we are expected to take position as sons. We are not servants in the family. We are not servants in the kingdom. This is our kingdom. It is part of us. We are partners in the kingdom. We are co-heirs in this kingdom. So let us take positions as the sons. Let us do what we are supposed to do. 
uh, spreading of the gospel does not need servants because actually, uh, as I finish, I would say that if you have ever worked for somebody and then the sun grows up, that is when you know your position. Because when the sun comes into that business, he becomes like the owner of that, he's actually the owner of that business. And his commands are as good as the father. So let us not be servants in the kingdom because servants will work to be paid. Let us be sons, take our positions as the sons of God and manifest who we are. Because we are his sons, we have his life, we will do what anything that God can do, we can do. Glory to Jesus. Um, I believe uh, uh, you're blessed by that word. Go and reign in Christ. Go and manifest because you are a son of the kingdom. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes, indeed, we are blessed. We are blessed and uh, we thank God for his word. I, I think I, I love, I don't know if I've ever had such a, a beautiful um, introduction of sonship in the family. Maybe it needed to come from a mother of four to understand how you get born into, into the family until I'm wondering, so where would a motherless believer feel rejected when you have been born not of the plans? It doesn't matter who planned or did not plan. The Holy Spirit planned for you. And how beautiful it is to hear that for the many, many years, billions of years, God was preparing this world for us. God was actually preparing for us. And that's why the Marvelous Believer Show is here, so that we can learn about this family that we've been, we have come to, that we've been accepted into, so that we mature, so that we mature into sons, so that there is no benefit whatsoever of a son that we shall not enjoy while we are here on earth. As while we are here, we have received eternal life while we are here. So let us, that's why there is a marvelous believer show. I believe that's where we learn so much about who we have become in Christ. And that's just what uh, Grace has been teaching us. And remember, it is the pleasure of the Father to give us a kingdom. That's what the Bible says. It's the pleasure of the Father. He has given it to us. He is happy to give us, like she was saying. It is his pleasure to give us all things. Wow, that, that was really very encouraging. Thank you so much. Uh, grace for coming and for blessing us and um, I believe I have a witness uh, from the marvelous believers who are watching with me that you will need to come back again and again we are so blessed thank you again for watching us and supporting us and loving us and being part of the marvelous believers show and also for supporting Wema TV we meet again next week God bless you <music>